Today we are going to look at the solution for Integrity's October XSS challenge. Now if you haven't given it a go yourself, it is still up and running at challenge-1021.integrity.io so go and try to find the solution on your own. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Let's take a look at this challenge. So we have all the information and the rules about the challenge, um, but let's skip over that for now and let's go into the challenge here, which we can see is uh, seemingly an, an embedded frame here on this page. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to inspect elements and look at what this is. And if we look at the bottom here, we can see that this is an iframe with a source to a local file in challenge slash challenge dot PHP. Now I can hold control and click this link and that will open the actual page here and that will show um, the challenge. So okay, we see the text Halloween has taken over and then at the bottom in small text we can read are you scared, are you still sane? Nobody can break this, nobody can save integrity. I use question mark HTML to convey these messages. I'll release integrity from my wrath after you pop an XSS, else integrity is mine, signed by Leadwitch69. So that explains that we need to pop an XSS and that there is this HTML get parameter that can seemingly do something. So let's play around with that. Let's see what happens if I set uh, question mark HTML, HTML rather to test in the URL. And then we see that we get test on the screen. So seemingly we have now performed an uh, content injection. We can inject content into the page, uh, but obviously we want an XSS. So let's try to get a very simple XSS by typing uh, script. So open a script tag. Then we're going to do an alert of document, document dot domain. And then we're going to close this script tag. And we see that nothing happens. We don't get our alert. So let's take a look in the inspector tools what is going on. So making this a bit bigger and looking at this diff with ID HTML, which contains an H1 and that contains our script tag, which is grayed out. Why is that? What's going on here? Why isn't this executing? In order to understand why our script is not being executed, we need to take a look at the code, at what the server is sending us. So let's take a look at this HTML and see what's going on. And on the third line here, we see this meta tag having a CSP, defining a content security policy or CSP. And this is very interesting. Why? Because a content security policy is a kind of mitigation to mitigate injection attacks such as XSS. How does it work? Well, in your content security policy, you define a policy that uh, says what can be loaded onto the script and what can't be loaded onto the script. And let's take a look at this specific one. It starts with a default source, uh, which is set to none. What does that mean? That pretty much means do not load anything, do not allow anything, and then we continue and then the other things that are defined here are what is allowed. And for the script source, so what kind of scripts are allowed? Well, uh, unsafe eval um, is set, which means that strings are allowed to be run, which is nice, um, but not that interesting. Uh, then we have strict dynamic, which I will get into in a little bit. Uh, but then lastly, we have this nonce dash and then a very long random, seemingly random string. What does this mean? Well, this means that only script tags that have an attribute nonce set to this value are allowed to run. And this is the reason why our script tag wasn't allowed to run because we didn't have that attribute nonce set to that value. And if I scroll down a little bit in the code, we will see that the script tags included into this page actually have that nonce. Now, why can't we just set that nonce attributes in our payload? Well, it is randomly generated by the server with every new request. So if you reload the page, you will notice that you get a new random nonce. And well, 
with the information that we currently have, we cannot try to approximate it or guess this nonce. So we're stuck there. We cannot include script decks that will be run. However, the CSP has this last attribute, this strict dynamic attribute. And looking at the documentation of it, it says that the script dynamic source expression specifies that the trust explicitly given to a script, so the trust given to a script, shall be propagated to all the other scripts loaded by that root script. So the trust given to a specific script, so it's allowed to run, will be propagated to other scripts created by this main script. What does that mean in our case? Let's say our script modifies the DOM by adding a new script tag somewhere uh, by, for example, document create element. Then that script tag that is created will be allowed to run. And now if we look at our code here and we scroll down to the script, we see here that document.createElement script is actually created. It, a script tag is created. So the contents of this script tag that is created, it's being run. So this is probably where we should keep on looking. Now let's jump into this script and try to figure this all out. Now, a note that this is going to get very, very confusing. This is a hard challenge, it's, it's difficult, there's a lot of things going on, but I'm gonna try to explain it the best way as possible. But as always, keep the challenge on the side and try to solve it yourself whilst watching the video and pausing at the right moments. But let's do this. So we have this script here, and we know that a script tag gets created at the end that will be executed. We also see that a child is gonna be appended to that tag with the contents of the E variable. Now the E variable is created at the top here and it will contain this random string plus the value of the get parameter XSS. Okay, so our input, the get parameter XSS, will be put in a script tag that's executed. Why can't we just put an alert in, that, uh, in the XSS get parameter and will it execute? Well, not exactly. Let's try that. So we are here again on our page and in the URL we see that we have the script text with the HTML uh, get parameter. We'll change that to XSS as we saw and we'll remove the script text because well this will be put automatically directly into uh, a script tag already. And if we run that we see at the bottom here that yes our alert ends up in there but it doesn't execute probably because of this garbage in front of it. Let's see if we can use a semicolon in front, if that will work. And no, it doesn't, because this will just error out. And that's a bummer. So we need a way of fixing these errors. And, well, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to just put a quote in front of it. However, we don't yet have a way of getting things in front of this. So we need to try to find that. Let's jump back in the code and take a look at what else is going on here and see where this E element is being edited. And in this if here, we see that something is being prepended to E here and we need something to be prepended to there. We need a quote before the E uh, to get our payload to work. So this is very interesting. So let's see how we end up in here. So in this if, we need to have an ID set to integrity and this ID needs to be set on the last element of uh, an element with the ID body. Now our HTML get parameter gets put into something with the ID of body. So that's already all right. It's not the last element, uh, but that's okay. So we know that we will have to, using that content injection that we used earlier, do something with this probably. Okay, so we need an element and I'm gonna type uh, here at the bottom quickly just what we need. So we need a, a, an element, so for example, a tag, and our tag is obviously going to be closed, and it's gonna have the ID integrity. Okay, now, then we're gonna take the last ch child of that element with the ID integrity that we, do, that we just created, Okay, so I'm gonna make another child here. So another tag, let's call that tag two, and let's close. Not the script, but our 
tag two. And I'm gonna move this one line below so we have the, some nicer uh, colors there. All right, then we're gonna take the inner HTML of this, so this, and then we're gonna take the last four characters of that inner HTML and we're gonna prepend those. So all we should need to do here is do a quote and then some random characters such as this. And now these last four characters will be, be prepended to this, which will make this a valid string, so valid JavaScript, and then our other part that we append at the end will execute. And that's the idea. Um, so yeah, it should be as simple as that, right? If you just put this as the, um, the HTML get parameter, it will work, no? Let's try it out. So I'm gonna say and HTML equals this. Okay, no alert, nothing gets prepended here. Where is our input? Let's look into, into this. And here we find our ID tag integrity, and here we find all of the rest. And we can see that it is inside of this body with the ID body, but it's not the last element. That's this container here. So we need to somehow get this to the last element, but on top of that, we're still in a div, in an h1. So first, let's try to escape this h1. Uh, and to do that, well, it's very simple. We can just append a closing h1 tag in front of this first tag, and then we'll, we'll be outside of this h1. So let's do that. So I'm gonna close an h1 tag, boom. Let's take a look. And yes, okay, we've already escaped that h1. And in the same way, we can escape this div so that we're on the same level of the first children, the first level children of this body. So to escape this diff, obviously, we just need to close the diff. And there we go. Now we are on the first level of children of this body, but we need to be the last child. And that's difficult. That's very difficult. And there's not really a logical way to do this. However, if you start playing around with the browser, then you will notice that the browser likes to fix things. It likes to make sure that things work. It, it doesn't like it if it doesn't work. And um, one of the things that a browser will do is it will try to put end, it will try to close tags if they are left open. So let's try to see what happens if we just leave this closing tag at the end here. The browser should try to fix it. And now we see something interesting. What? Now our element is the last one. And the container and this is now inside of our tag. Yes, for some reason, the browser decided, hey, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to put this tag at the end there. Okay, that's very interesting already. So our ID integrity tag is already at the end. And here in our JavaScript, we can see that something is has been prepended here. And that is, well, that is the input of the last element of the last um, element of our ID integrity, which is this container. So that's this pan closing tag. Okay, cool. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We just now need to get this quote as the last ele element here. How are we going to do that? Well, let's use the same technique as we saw before. If we leave out this closing tag, the browser will just close it at the end and that will get us a little closer already. So let's leave out this closing tag. And now we see that our payload has changed here because now the end of this container is the end here. Uh, all right, getting closer and not yet there. What we now need to do is put something after this diff. And we know the browser will do that. If we open a tag, the browser will close it at the end. So let's uh, rip our payload out, out of here for a second and let's just try to close, uh, create a tag that we choose, for example, uh, a tag called pink. And now we see ink is the last part here because the browser decided to close pink after this container. Cool stuff. Now all we need to do is get a quote in there. Now do quotes just work in an element? Well, of course they do. The browser closed it as pink quotes. And now we have NK quote here. Now this still errors out because there are still two characters in front of this quote. However, if we just add two more characters at the end of it, like AA, then we will see that that works. And that now we have a nice alert and we have popped the XSS on this challenge. 
Now, I really, really like this challenge, playing around with the browser, with how the browser tries to fix things where it probably shouldn't always fix things. I hope you learned something new about the CSP and about XSS in general. As always, if you like this video, uh, please leave a like, comment, and if you have a, a challenge, a great challenge ID that you would like to make for us, uh, then feel free to uh, tell us in the comments and we'll get in contact uh, so you can release your challenge uh, on the Integrity platform. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back next month.